Zillow updated their forecast for home prices in 2023, and it went up a lot. Every month or so, they update what they think housing prices are going to do. And at the beginning of 2023, they said that they were calling for a 1.1% decline. So that is relatively bullish. Only a 1% decline was pretty small compared to what a lot of other people were forecasting. About a month ago, they were saying home prices were going to go up 3.9%. So they've already done some upward revisions. But just from last month, to this month, they are now saying that home prices by the end of 2023 will be up 5% for the year. So that is obviously pretty significant. Most forecasters have been calling for at least modest declines in home prices this year. Listen, we know, obviously Zillow business model that favors people believing that the housing market is strong, but for what it's worth, they have been one of the most accurate models so far in 2023 because housing prices are about flat and that's what they called for last year. The other thing, is that they're not alone. There are other big institutions that are also upwardly revising their forecasts. CoreLogic is saying that over the next year, we're gonna have 4.3% year over year growth. Goldman Sachs is projecting now positive, only 1%, but at least positive in 2023. We're also seeing Morgan Stanley upgrade their forecast. So this is a really significant shift in what most economists and housing market analysts and experts are thinking about the housing market for the rest of the year. It is time to flip the script on how you invest in real estate. And there's one company out there that's actually changing the game, and that is Backflip. From finding a property to funding it, the investing process has never been easier than it is with Backflip's free app. You can pull comps, you can estimate profits in seconds, and you can apply for a personalized loan all in one place. The best thing is that Backflip is completely free, and by signing up the link below, you'll actually get $500. That is right, $500 in credit towards your first loan with them. Head to backflip.mobi slash BP or check the link in the description. In last like October, I made my own forecast and I said that for 2023, I thought that housing prices would decline somewhere between three and 8%. As of right now, that is looking too bearish. If you look at prices, they are about even right now. So I might have been too pessimistic, but that was already last October. There's so much has changed in the economy and in the housing market. So at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you my current thinking about the direction of the housing market. Let's just talk about what all of these economists are looking at that makes them have this housing market optimism. I think there are basically two broad buckets of things that they're looking at. One is housing market conditions, of course, just like what is going on on the ground. And the second is broader macroeconomic resilience. First, let's just talk about the market. And we obviously talk about a lot on this YouTube channel and on this particular segment. If you watch every single Wednesday, which you should be, let's get into some of the data that just shows what's going on. First, rising mortgage rates have obviously impacted the housing market. When mortgage rates go up, it reduces affordability and that has caused demand to plummet. And you can actually see this in, in measurable ways. The, my favorite way personally to look at demand in the housing market is the Mortgage Bankers Association Mortgage Purchase Index. That is a mouthful, but basically what it does is measures how many people on a weekly basis are applying for a mortgage to buy a new home, not to refinance. And if you look at the data here, you can see that it has really declined over the last year or so. Back in 2021, which was abnormally high, but it was about 300, this index. Now it's about 150. So the index has halved in about the last 18 months. So we've seen a significant decrease in demand coming out of the market. But, you know, demand doesn't operate on its own. You have to see what supply is doing. And when you look at supply, supply is also leaving the market. In the housing market, we typically look at supply. There's different ways to do it, but what I'm showing here is something just called inventory, basically how many homes are for sale at any given time. And as you can see from this data from Redfin, it is extremely low in historical context. This data goes back to 2012, and you can see, yes, it was lower during the pandemic, and it did spike up a little bit towards the end of last year, but it's been basically flat for all of 2023. And right now, there is not any serious indication that that is going to change, right? Supply isn't really going up. Foreclosures are going up a little bit, but really, if you look at the numbers, like they're not actually going up in any meaningful way on a national level, maybe in a local market, they might be, but on a national level, it's really not going to move the needle on inventory. And if you look at this next chart, you see new listings, which is just how many people choose to sell their house. It's going down. It is going in the opposite direction. We're almost at negative 30 percent 
year over year when you look at new listings. So I think it's unlikely, at least in the short term, that supply rebounds. Of course, that can all change long term, but in the next couple of months, it doesn't seem like that. So I think when you look at these things, there's just basic supply and demand dynamics in the housing market. That's what these forecasters are looking at. Even though demand has left the market, supply has dropped so much, mostly due to the lock. In fact, people don't want to lose their great mortgages, that prices have remained stable. That's how supply and demand works. If they both fall, prices and the balance between supply and demand stay stable. Depends who you ask, but prices, if you look at the Case Shiller, which is a great index, but it lags like three months, so we're looking at like April data right now, they're down about 1.7%. I expect that when July data comes out, we'll see that that is actually closer to even. Meanwhile, Redfin, Zillow, some of the other institutions that keep more real-time data um, are showing housing prices year over year on a national level about even. So that's housing market dynamics. The second thing here is the economic resilience. And I say resilience because most people, myself included, believe that with all of the increases in interest rates, that there would be broad economic you know, downturns. Like we would see the labor market increase, GDP would go negative, consumer spending would go down. But so far, that actually has not happened, which is surprising. I am surprised. And listen, we are we are far from out of the woods. I, I, I'll just give you a preview of my opinion. I'm going to share it more later, but I do think there's still a lot of risk. But right now, just like where we're sitting today, if you look at the data from July of 2023, we're, I'm recording this in August, but we have data from last month. There is a lot of good economic data. And of course, this can change any time. But right now, if you're a forecaster at Zillow or one of these other things, you're looking at this and saying, maybe the economy is not as bad as we were expecting it to be right now. So let's just look at a couple key indicators. The first is GDP. This is gross domestic product. It's just basically a way of measuring the aggregate total of economic output of the entire country. And as you can see, GDP is up. This is um, from Q2. Uh, GDP is measured quarterly. So it's from the second quarter from April to June of 2023, and it grew at a 2.6% annualized rate. And it is important to know that what we're looking at here on this chart is quote unquote real GDP, which means that it is on top of inflation. So that means that the U.S. economy grew 2.6% above inflation. And that's really important. 2.6% isn't great growth. Like you can see that it's been kind of low at or around 2% over the last couple of months, but it has gone up the last two quarters in a row. So that is something that indicates to, you know, a relatively strong economy, at least right now. The second thing is the labor market. And I, I admit there, there is tons of different data for the labor market. None of it is perfect. But if you just look at the sum total of all the labor data that is out there, the trend is that the labor market is really resilient. Unemployment is low, jobs are being added every month, and labor force participation, the number of people who are working, is actually going up right now. The other thing that I'll show you just quickly is that continuing unemployment claims are actually going down. This means people who are unemployed, who got laid off, and who are struggling or like looking for work, that has gone down. Of course, none of, a lot of this data, you know, the big criticism about government data on labor is uh, that doesn't cover the gig economy, and that is true. But just generally speaking, if you look at a lot of the data, and I do all the time, it does seem like the labor market is holding up much better than at least I expected it to at this point in the tightening cycle. The last indicator that I want to show you is consumer spending, because consumer spending, although there's tons of businesses in the U.S., consumer spending actually drives 70 percent of, of GDP. And so it's really important when you're trying to figure out which way the, the economy is going. Right now, consumer spending is continuing to go up. It's not going up at any blistering pace. But if you look at this chart going back almost 10 years, you can see that the trajectory is relatively linear and that it is continuing to go up. So what I'm just trying to show you is, you know, these are some, you know, important macroeconomic housing market indicators that these companies like Zillow are probably looking at when they're making their forecast. What do I think? You know, as a reminder, I said about, you know, nine months ago that I thought the housing market in 2023, we would end in December of 2023 down somewhere between negative three and negative 8% year over year. If I were to redo that today, I would join these other people and also revise it upward. I wouldn't advise it 
uh, you know, I wouldn't go as much as Zillow. I actually think it's going to be something closer to flat. But to give myself a little bit of wiggle room, I'm going to say that if I had to guess, you know, my you know educated opinion uh, in August of 2023 is that when we reach December, housing prices will be somewhere between negative three and three percent in December. So that's basically flat. I want to make clear that I am not saying anything about 2024. I think it's way too early to understand the economic picture for 2024. And there's still a good chance that the labor market turns and unemployment goes up, the economy backslides, and we see negative GDP growth. I think all those things, it is too early to say whether we're out of the woods on that. But right now, again, if I, you know, it's a point in time, forecasting is incredibly difficult. And if you're just looking at the existing data and looking at some of the big trends, it doesn't seem like we're going to slide backwards at least through the end of 2023. If, and I think it's a big if, if there is like a big correction, I think it will be in 2024, but not saying that that's going to happen. Ultimately, I really think it's going to come down to mortgage rates. You know, if they go up or stay above 7%, I think we're going to see, you know, downward pressure on housing prices and we'll see a correction probably closer to my original forecast, somewhere around negative 3%. But if they decline to the low sixes as inflation continues to come down, I think we'll see housing prices, you know, stay even or maybe go up a couple percentage points, two, three percent, maybe even up to what Zillow is saying, which is five percent. Of course, we're just going to have to wait and see. But I did want to just update you with my thinking as of 2023. I do my best to make these forecasts and projections, but there is a lot of uncertainty in the market right now. And I'm not going to just stick to what I said nine months ago. I'm going to tell you where I think I was wrong, where I think I was right, and update you on my latest thinking. So that was the point of this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next week.